Hey, Megan Scalia, this is the Liverpool Show, and joining me now is Orla Vreen. How are you keeping, Orla? I'm great, Megan. Thank you very much for the call. Um, I have to say, I have all your titles written down. You're Chair of the Munster Council and Vice Chair of the CLRG, obviously heavily involved in the Irish dancing, and uh, I believe dating back to 1929, your family have been connected to it. Yes, um, we are, we, I, um, I'm part of the team of the O'Rourke School of Dancing here in Limerick, and which was founded just like by my grand aunt and my grandmother in 1929. Yeah, so a long legacy. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of investment over a number of generations. And your family would have seen firsthand, and I'm sure they've seen various different pandemics over those years of, and, you know, but I think most importantly have seen the effect and the power that dancing has on not just young people, but on, on everyone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, going through that period of time, obviously, that's having come in, you know, having begun almost in a period of recession, mm -hmm. gone through a world war, gone through various periods of well, like trouble, unemployment, etc. And, uh, you know, prevailed through all of it. And this this COVID has been quite a quite a challenge to everybody, not just to us. But I suppose because we've been through it and so much before, there was a determination to to do our best to hang on to the, the cultural impetus. Like my my mother's father was the, the president of Cunna Nagoilga in Limerick. So we were very connected to the language and the culture. So like I feel very strongly that it's something very worth preserving. And I am no, I'm not alone in that. I share that vision with teachers all over the country, you know, and, and I've experienced a lot of, of stressed people who've been doing their best, you know, in, in like in a lot of walks life to follow the guidelines. But they're, you know, children don't have forever to be a dancer. You know, there's an optimum time and like they're losing this opportunity, which is a terrible pity. And now you are speaking in the House of the Rock this because you are talking about dancing and it's not just um, Irish dancing, it's all forms of dancing about keeping it and going into 2021 and giving children a chance to stay dancing no matter what restrictions we're in. Yeah, absolutely. Because basically it seemed it seemed that there was a bit of inconsistency and almost a contradictory term in the notion that and absolutely I want to categorically state that all of the Irish dancing teachers have been really vigilant and wanted to play our part. And, you know, we we shut down classes, we went into pods, we went on to Zoom as everybody did. But when things are opening up indoors, it just said there is no dancing and, and there wasn't, wasn't a why or where for, for it. And then people were postulating that, you know, it's a physical activity, but other physical activities seem to continue. And again, we weren't trying to stop that, but just trying to understand why dancing wasn't allowed. I mean, if 36 children can be in a classroom and some of our, our dance teachers are school teachers, so they're teaching all day, they're seeing up to 400 children and then they can't teach five children in a gym that's like, 3,000 square feet that's ventilated. So it seemed that there was a little bit of inconsistency there. So we're just trying to get answers really and to find out, you know, what is the plan? Because we, we want to get people back to class so that they can get back to doing what they love. Absolutely. And you made a comment which I just adored and it was saying about how, you know, they, they dance for fun and for entertainment, but they also have to train like athletes because yeah. it's like anything, practice makes perfect. And this is the thing, because for many of the children, like, like some people would, would go as a hobby. And I understand children have a variety of hobbies and some children have six hobbies, you know, but it's really hard to explain to them why one hobby then is not allowed at all. And the other four might be allowed, you know, under level three. And I suppose that was the question we were asking for it. And particularly for children who would dance maybe four to five nights a week, it's very challenging um, because that's not just their hobby. That's something that they've bought into that they want to engage with professionally. And suddenly, literally, it's just taken away from them. And with all due respect, like, it's not the same like squatting in the hall at home or around the kitchen where your brothers and sisters are doing their homework, trying to learn your heavy jig like on a little mat, you know, and people have been fantastic. They've really tried to, you know, we've had um, work group committees come up with challenges, but, you know, you can't live on that forever. And, you know, I think it's right. And you mentioned there, no, Zoom has been great for all of us. And look, here we are. We're so grateful for it. But something for, for everything, you just it's the natural and the kind of the the real life interaction it's as you said dancing beside your school friends seeing what they're doing maybe picking up you know off them and I think another thing people have to realize too is sometimes you might pick in everything in life you can pick up a bad habit so it's good to have someone say no do it this way yeah. or you know bring it bring it back and that's true you're, you're very right there because when people are in a room and they're dancing there is a certain kinesthetic empathy you know that you do pick up from you know seeing somebody else rather than just and you know in zoom as well you're mirroring so i'm saying things like you know go towards the couch turn around towards the telly and then i'm going actually no it's the opposite way around this is just what i'm seeing <laughs> so there have been like a lot of challenges and then the other issue that really bothered us is that not all children have access to like 
like um, really good connectivity. Yeah. And in some households, then you were trying to time your classes because there was one brother doing the leaving search and then one sister doing trying to study for the junior search. And then the two younger ones are trying to get on and do their dance class in different rooms. And I'd say for parents, this is massively stressful. And, and you may be aware of that. We've had quite a lot of like a lot of engagement from parents and dancers, as well as teachers throughout the country, writing letters and want to know what they can do. So they, they really have done their part. You know, we've gotten supports from the medical profession, from people who work with physical fitness, because we're turning on and off these kids fitness and that, that's not good for their bodies either. You know, so it's been it's been a worry and we feel it's our duty to at least, you know, give them clear answers rather than just say it's on it's off you can you can't and you know you can go to rugby tops and you can go to gymnastics but you can't go to dancing without giving them like a reason why I know I think that's it too it should be they should like everything as you said it should be straight across the board rules for all activities and whether it's dancing whether it's like GA and whatever sport it is or whatever activity it is you know yeah. they should all be allowed because as you said they're sitting in classrooms all day long with classmates yeah. and up to 30 kids yeah. so why shouldn't they be allowed to to do yeah, that and you know the other the other issue is that for many children like dancing is the physical activity that they get so there's a cultural impetus from it obviously but it also is an exercise form for them so they're not getting that either so it's really difficult then because when they come back into the real studio situation whenever that is you're going to have to take your time like building them up again because you've got a responsibility to work with you know the varying levels of fitness that people will have had depending on you know where if they've had a shed to practice in or have they been like we've had zoom classes literally with children on the beach on a farm we've had cows bulls grannies and um, we've had infants and brothers and sisters and dolls you know because this yeah. is the reality of people's homes and people have been phenomenal they really have um but you know that doesn't last forever we want to give them some sort of a future plan and something to look forward to you know everyone's hoping like oh we'll be back to level three next week but like for all those kids that just means they go to school and that's it <laughs> Oh, they've been going to school so great. Oh, Lorene's ask kind slap, and I've got some more people to chat to as well about this. And all I can say is, uh, wish you well with rest campaign and to look up. Yeah, me and Marcus, because my aunt, my to aunt, because it's not a chat with all like this, like then you're a taco in of the, you know, the only top artists are called tour. I guess the ring could go like a hacker. Me and Marcus, me and Sean. Me and Marcus, Sean. Joining me now, it is David Gini, Derbla Lennon, and Lisa Watson. You're all very welcome to the Limerick Post Show. Thank you for having us. It's, uh, you know, it's such a great campaign. We were speaking to Oral Nivreen all about it. And uh, David, you just launched a really important video on Facebook. Can you tell us about it? Yes, yeah, so about two, two and a half weeks ago, uh, Claire McMorrow, Linda Martin and Helen Green came to me about creating a video for this campaign called Let Our Children Dance. And uh, it was about getting as many kids from as many different genres together in this big collaboration and uh, about creating awareness that these teachers can teach in a safe and uh, healthy environment. As about trying to get the kids back moving again. So we've uh, put out the video and it's had about 80,000 80, views in two days. So uh, hopefully it's uh, going to reach the right people and we can get that message across. And your Facebook page is David Gini. So for those who haven't shared it, please get on and share it and let's spread the message. Derbla, how important is this campaign? I think it's really hugely important, not only for the children um, and young people, they're not all children, for young people who are dancing, but also for the teachers who have their livelihoods have been so impacted by the pandemic. Um, I think dancing generally just makes people feel better and what better way to forget about your worries, to forget about all the things that have been so wrong in children's lives for the last nine months than to dance. And uh, what, what we'd like to get across is that children can dance in a very safe and controlled environment. It, you know, it doesn't have to be a free for all. Mm. Uh, we can do short classes in well-ventilated spaces with plenty of social distancing. We can teach in our pods of five, like we were doing in, in level two, which, provide, which provided a very safe environment for all the children. And across all genres, we know that dance is just so important um, to, to young people and for their emotional, physical, and mental health. Lisa, how can we all, the public and all that are watching and listening, how can we help her, you know, how can we help maybe get this over the line? Definitely sharing David's video and I know everybody knows somebody that dances and knows somebody that it means so much to them and if we could just get David's video shared or even you guys shared other social media platforms just get the message out there just so that you know we can get this over the line. I think it was very important to what um, Orla was saying earlier, you know, it's, it's not dancing is part of the arts, but it's also it's a sport that, you know, and you have to train your bodies as well. And it, she was saying as well that you can't, can't have just loads of kids coming back after being off for so long. And you nearly have to kind of 
pay her back and start again because you know like all of us for, an, for anything we do if you get unfit that's when you get injuries and it's important to keep us going you know training because as I said you have to practice makes perfect you need to be training for these for, for fetches and for for all these different dance events that are taking place so I guess it's important for, for all children and parents children to to get behind this initiative but how have you found that children have been reacting to it? It was fine during the first lockdown you know we all went to zoom and um, it was a novelty they all the kids all loved dancing out at home and you know they were able to connect with kids from all over the world and teachers from different parts of the world but now I think it's gone on so long that they're back in school they're with their friends in school they're traveling in cars to school with different kids from different classes they're in after school child minding facilities that also do have dance as part of that so you know they can definitely definitely have dance classes outside of that with five like Derva said and pods of five or smaller classes shorter times it can definitely be done Derva and I suppose as well um children I guess are seeing maybe dancers are probably seeing kids who play sport and they're allowed to still play sport all the time so it's kind of it's quite unfair for for kids who are dancers to not be able to get together and dance yeah it is and what what we have found is dancing a uh, dancing in general how the teachers the children everyone has been incredibly resilient and resourceful we have managed to get our dancers maybe training outside running moving and and the movement part is is very important absolutely and we have been keeping them training be it on zoom or outdoors but I am actually finding that the biggest impact that this is having is on the children's mental well-being their social interactions and I do think that particularly teenagers dance is such an outlet for them a social outlet and I think you know they go to dance class they see friends they have their chats and, and that can be it can sort of quench a thirst for social contact that they're just not getting um you know in school everything is so tightly regulated and rightly so and and with all of this we are not trying to compromise safety for anyone we totally appreciate regulations have to be in place I think we're just trying to do the very very best for our industry across all dance genres and there is something in that maybe if, if they could attend their dance class, it might quench that thirst for social contact that teenagers are maybe then going out to, to try and find elsewhere where, you know, they could see some friends in a dance situation, which is a very controlled environment, and that might be enough for them. Um, I do think that that the mentally that this is so, so difficult the second time round, more so than the first time. I, I think so many of our dancers are just saying, I don't do Zoom. And so they're stopping. We're losing dancers at 100 miles an hour, which is a real tragedy for all dance forms. I think, yeah, you've mentioned there, like children have, we've like, and as I think all of us, we have so much energy we need to burn up and, we, you know, we burn it up in our dance class and our gym classes. And like there you said, I think everyone's just starting to find the whole Zoom thing very, very tough. Um, David, like I suppose we're all, we're, we're missing that kind of lack of, 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 of real life and, and seeing people in real life. Yeah, I mean, like over the past couple of months, we've had, educated ourselves in this virus we've listened to all the top experts we're constantly learning about it i think people just want the common sense approach to approach now they they all want a chance to prove that they can do this safely and that's one of the main messages of the video is that they can provide these safe classes they can do them in smaller pods they can socially distance by six times the amount required because they're in these massive halls they've got less students inside them so i think they're looking for the common sense i mean we've sacrificed a lot and people will continue to sacrifice a lot. It's not like Darvilla said, they're trying to compromise safety. They're not trying to do that at all. They're literally trying to show that they can do this safely. And I come from a pub background. We're fighting a different battle in another corner. And it's the yeah. same thing. They just want a common sense approach that, that you can do this safely and it can be done. Absolutely. And of course, David Gini on Facebook to share that video. Let's get it all around Ireland and further again. And let's get dancing back. Lisa, Darvilla and David, thank you so much for chatting to me on the Limerick Post Show. Thanks so much for having us, Megan. Thanks, Megan.